Hi everyone, it's Lauren and this is my August reading wrap up. I read a whole lot of books in August, so let's get stuck in. The first book I read was a reread, which was Jane Eyre. I mentioned this in my currently reading a video I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, I reread it as part of my page to screen project, and um, those videos are going to be up in the next few days. I've actually got two Jane Eyre page to screens because there were so many um, adaptations and I really wanted to talk about each of them properly so I split it into two halves to make it easier so I'm not going to talk loads about the plot now because I am going to talk about it later and it's just you know it's Jane Eyre. it's Jane Eyre. we all know about Jane Eyre. I'm really pleased that I reread it because I think before I always thought that I didn't enjoy Jane Eyre but I liked the idea of the story but I didn't enjoy the actual reading and rereading it really helped me um, realise I did enjoy it but ultimately I don't think it's my favourite, it's not one of my favourite classics, um, I think some of the plot is a little bit convenient and I'm, you know, uh, it, it's okay. Um, I think I, I enjoy the language and I enjoy kind of the story but some of the plot parts a little bit unbelievable and kind of dodgy for me. Um, like especially when Jane kind of meets Sinjin and they happen to be cousins, like things like that, I'm just a bit like really. But it's a really good experience. I'm going to talk about the plot more in my uh, page to screen videos, so um, if you're interested, watch those coming in a couple of days. What I did read then, as a kind of companion to it, because I thought it was going to be really interesting, um, was The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. And I thought this would be really interesting to read kind of just after finishing Jane Eyre, so like, if you've not read Jane Eyre, like, close your ears now. But this is about a woman with depression or um, other kind of undiagnosed uh, mental health issues who is kept in an attic with bright disgusting yellow wallpaper um, by her husband and for her health and she's kept up there to rest um, in order to recuperate and it that's sort of the opposite of what needed to happen to her and it catalogues her mental downfall in the form of a diary that she's keeping in secret and I thought this would be really interesting to read a kind of flip of the mad woman in the attic sort of trope I'll read the back it says this horrifying semi-autobiographical feminist story of imprisonment and madness scandalized 19th century society and I can I, I think that's a really good summation of what this is because this is one of the best and most um, realistic and believable characterizations of um, madness or you know mental mental health issues from the 19th century that I've ever read and it just really rings true I think a lot of the time um, illness in general really wasn't understood and in in fiction characters kind of get ill or go mad or whatever kind of at a drop of a hat and as a modern reader you're reading it going that's not that's not how people get ill <laughs> it doesn't happen that way and this just felt so realistic I mean if it's semi autobiographical then that could be why but it just felt so ahead of its time um, in both both the way that our narrator is feeling about her own um, melancholy and her own um, issues but also about the way her husband and her servants react to her and the way the doctors react to her um, just felt so um, believable and you could really understand how it contributed to uh, her mental breakdown essentially um, rather than helping. This is a collection of short stories, it comes with two other short stories which are equally kind of spooky um, and it's really interesting, I'm really pleased that I read it and I'm really pleased that I, I have it as part of this collection. I also read another little black classic this month and that was Gooseberries by Anton Chekhov which is uh, again a collection of three of his short stories. I've not read any um, Chekhov plays or anything like that before so I thought this would be a really good introduction to his writing um, and I really enjoyed it. These three stories are quite different but the thing that's linking them all together um, in my view is kind of the idea of happiness and the idea of, of pursuing it and holding on to it whether it's transitory, whether it's a lack of happiness in your life and you think you're happy but actually you're not or um, in the final story which is, which is called Gooseberries is about a man achieving achieving his goals and achieving his dreams and becoming a happy man he's got everything he's ever wanted and then where does that leave you to go from there once you're happy what happens then and um, so it's really interesting I can see why they've grouped these three stories together I think I got a bit of a taste of um, Chekhov's writing um, it was it was just a taste I don't feel like I really understand him as a writer yet but I'm, I'm pleased that I started I found it quite accessible um, and a good place to start probably. The next book I finished in August was Gilead by Marilyn Robinson and I spoke about this in my currently reading video as well but I just thought this was wonderful. I'm I'm really really pleased that I finally read Gilead. It's essentially an epistolary novel I suppose although it's not really letters it's um, the narrator is a very old man who is a reverend in the small town of Gilead and he had a son very late in life and he now has heart troubles. His son's only about six or seven and he's probably going to be dead within the year so he's right to his son um, about his own life, about his father's life and about his grandfather's life and about kind of the life of everyone in the whole town, how he met his mother. All the things that when his son is older and wants to ask his father questions about where he's come from, um, he's not going to be there to answer so he's kind of putting it all into a letter now. What I really loved about this book, more so than the, than the plot that is is created through him talking about the characters in the, in the, in the town, 
is the way that it talks about life and also religion. Because at the point of writing, our main character knows that he's about to die. The view that he has on life and the world in general is kind of tinged with sadness, but it's, it's so beautiful and so true. And I found his discussion of religion and theology and philosophy just so interesting and so beautiful and the kind of the different ways you can interpret things um, I just thought was wonderful. And I'm really looking forward to reading the next two companion novels to this series, um, Home and Lila, next because her, her writing was just was just so beautiful. The next book I read was The Chimes by Anna Smail. Um, and I'm not going to talk about too much about this plot now uh, because I have a lot, a lot of thoughts about this book. And next weekend, myself, uh, Lena and Jenna are all going up to Edinburgh to see uh, Jean. And we're going to be doing some videos and talking about all the Man Booker books and that kind of thing. And I know Jean has nearly finished this book herself, and we've been talking about it. And I, I think we're probably going to shoot a video together discussing this more in depth, because I have so many thoughts about it, and I just, I'm not going to be able to kind of do it justice as part of this video. This is a dystopian novel, and it's set in London and the outskirts of London. And the premise of this uh, futuristic world is that there has been some kind of war, and the population now is controlled by um, this huge instrument which gives out chimes. So the chimes happen every evening and each evening the music that vibrates uh, through uh, the, the town causes the inhabitants to lose their memory. So every morning they're kind of trying to remember who they are and they're using their muscle memory and they sort of have to go through their names and go through what they're doing and then and then live their day. Because people have forgotten how to read, so people are using music in order to mem remember stuff. They use music to give directions and they use music as a way of speaking. And it's just, like, the imagination that Anna has is just amazing. It's such an interesting concept. And um, even the terminology she uses, like when she's talking about people going fast or slow or talking quietly she uses musical terminology um, like piano and forte and things like that so I, it's just such an interesting book so many thoughts um, I'm gonna have to go more in depth later but really interesting I think especially because um, Anna Smell intended this to be a YA novel when she started writing it and then as she was writing it and also in discussions with her editor I think she realised this is kind of it's not strictly YA it's kind of more for everyone um, and it's really interesting seeing it kind of bridge the gap in terms of is, is this why is this literary fiction because should there be genres I mean that's a whole other question the next book I finished this month was The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer um, and I actually listened to this in the form of an audiobook and I've never listened to an audiobook before so it was a completely new experience for me and one I'm not sure whether I enjoyed but I'm really pleased that I tried it if you don't know who Amanda Palmer is she used to be in the a band called the Dresden Dolls she's now a solo musician and she also happens to be married to Neil Gaiman and a few years ago she launched a Kickstarter to crowdfund her most recent album and it was a huge success and everyone in the media kind of was startled by this because crowdfunding was such a new concept um, and she was then asked to give a TED talk on asking and the difference between asking and begging and asking for help and kind of why everyone reacted so weirdly to her Kickstarter that she did and then from the TED talk came this book. So this is an expansion on the topics of that talk and also a little bit about her own life. She used to work as a living statue um, and, and it, it, it's almost, it's part biography and part um, almost manifesto or self-help book, that's how, that's how I felt anyway. What's really great about the audio version of this book is that this is narrated by Amanda Palmer herself so as a performance artist she's really good at giving her at telling her own story I um, mean it also uses some of her music in, in ways that maybe the lyrics would be written down in a, in a book but you actually get to hear her music and that really gave it kind of a new an extra layer and an extra depth which I which I really appreciated I appreciated hearing her voice telling me these things so that was good I'm not sure if audiobooks in general are my thing it just I, I don't know I don't know I really like the act of reading and this was great because I had a, a couple of really long drives this week so I just had it on while I was driving so that that really worked but I think apart from that I just I prefer to sit and read I think that's just what I prefer so I'm, pl I'm pleased that I tried it and I think if you're into audiobooks this is a really good audiobook to get I think it's really well done as an audiobook but talking about the content rather than the media through which I consumed it I think it's always interesting hearing um, autobiographies of people who are um, artists or, or people who have got to a place where they feel that they're successful or where they're doing what they want to be because obviously the route to success is not like this, it's much more like this and um, I, th I thought that was really interesting kind of hearing her story, like what she's gone through. But I did think it was interesting the way she talks about the connection between the art, the 
artist and the viewer or consumer of that art. And what really got through to me wasn't just um, her t talking about we should be able to ask for help shamelessly, like you shouldn't feel awkward about asking, like that's a good thing, you need to get out and connect with people and ask them for help sometimes and give your help in return. But it also really took away from it like the importance of the act of giving and generosity that I can afford others. And this isn't really a self-help book, but I did kind of take a lot of stuff from it and it has changed how I view um, connections with people and the way I view art and the kind of community spirit and I, I hope to take some of those thoughts into my everyday life like I, I, it was really interesting for me and I think this would be an especially good book to read if you are just about to go to university at university in your early 20s at that point in your life you're kind of like oh I guess I want to do this but I suppose I've got to get a real job and I don't really know how to combine those two things kind of hearing from someone who's gone through all of that and came to rock stardom or musicianhood quite, you know, relatively late in her life. And I think it just drives a message home that it's never too late to do what you want to do. And also that there are people out there who will help you do that. If you make those connections, make those friendships, um, you can kind of get to that place. So it was really good. Um, I would recommend it. I probably, personally, I probably would have enjoyed it more if I'd read it, although this is this was a really good audiobook version. Um, and if you like audiobooks and you're interested in this, I would recommend downloading it. And then the last two books that I finished in August were two more um, Man Booker long listers. And they were Saturn Island by Tom McCarthy and Did You Ever Have a Family? by Bill Clegg and I'm probably going to make separate review videos for both of these because they were so interesting and I, I really want to talk about them more. Um, this one because I feel like this has got a lot of mixed reviews and I think the reason is it's not been explained properly. I don't think the blurb really gives you an idea about what it's about um, and I think if you go into it thinking one thing and then you get another thing you're like oh okay that's not what I thought. Very coherent Lauren, that was a really nice description there. This basically follows an anthropologist who has been tasked with the job of creating an anthropological study of the entirety of current society um, so where we stand now and in him trying to achieve that this book itself almost becomes that study or at least a study on the impossibility of that task so it's not a plot driven book it's more philosophical and has lots of different thoughts in it um, but really interesting and I'm going to talk about this more I'm going to talk about this more later and then finally did you ever have a family by Bill Clegg um, this is the story of a woman who the night before her daughter's wedding her whole house goes up in flames so her daughter dies her daughter's fiance dies and then the woman's ex-husband the daughter's father he dies and also her new, her new boyfriend so she's lost everybody who was in her family she was in the garden when this happened so she she was spared um and i i knew that premise before i went into it but what i didn't realize was that this is not just kind of about her coping with her grief and like leaving the town and starting a new life it's also about how it affects everybody in the town and all the people connected to it and it's a small town and this tragedy happens and there's other people who were going to cater at the wedding and stuff and it, you you get to hear from a multitude of characters which i thought was really interesting um it's just so well structured i really enjoyed it i think i read it too quickly almost because I just wanted to get through it and this could have done with a bit of a slower reading I think so I will make a separate video on this as well because I really want to kind of get under its skin and discuss it properly so I'm really sorry this is this is such an unhelpful video I'm just going I'm going to talk about this later I'm going to talk about this later but <laughs> And now I have a really nice job of announcing the winners of my giveaway from last week. 800 of you entered which was amazing for a couple of reasons one because I was really I was really genuinely worried that maybe not everyone would want a book. Like I thought maybe a few people would enter and then maybe no one would want like Elizabeth is missing or something and then I'd have <laughs> it would be really embarrassing and have a book left over. And also because it was really nice to see um comments from so many people that don't normally comment on my videos. There's a num there's there are people that I speak to um, fairly often and then it was just really nice to hear from more of you than I than I usually do. Most people just commented their giveaway entry. Um but some people did actually kind of give tell me little stories or kind of reach out to me in, in more ways and I didn't reply to any of the comments because I wanted to keep it like a competition space and didn't want it to look like um, I was kind of favouring anybody or anything like that um, so I didn't reply to anything but it was really nice to hear from more, more of you than I normally do and I really do want to foster on this channel um, an environment where we can talk to each other and we actually have a proper dialogue so I did just want to say before I announce the winners that um, it would be, if, if you ever 
want to come in and, and say something to me or email me or t tweet me or anything like that like that's that's great and I would love to hear from you so anyway these are the people that won I used a random number generator from 1 to 800 and then I kind of counted down the comments um, to find the people who who, who was like 136 or whoever it was um, so this was completely impartial the winner of Elizabeth is missing is Bieber Giovanna I'm really sorry if I mispronounce your name or mispronounce anybody's names like really sorry um, this is what I think you're called so Bieber you are the winner of Elizabeth is missing the winner of Sapiens is Vanessa from Jaboski the winner of the bone clocks is Jasmine from Project Plot the winner of the paying guests is Ellie from the bibliophile and the winner of the narrow road to the deep north is Amy from Amzers 13 so thank you to everyone who entered congratulations to the people that won um, I will contact all of you individually as well just in case you're not watching this video which I don't know why I'm talking to you if you're not watching this video it's all getting a bit weird um, but I will contact you directly to get find your addresses and send you the books oh I almost forgot and the winner of the tote bag of those five people the person who won the bonus extra tote bag is Bieber so Bieber you won the tote bag and Elizabeth is missing as well so thank you to everyone who entered the giveaway um, there are going to be lots of videos from me coming up in the next couple of weeks mostly because we've got this man booker thing going on and that's in addition to all the normal videos there'll also be vlogs and things from our trip to edinburgh next weekend i imagine and um all kinds of stuff going on so you're going to be seeing my face a lot um <laughs> the next couple of weeks sorry about that so i will see you very very soon in my next video bye every time i mention this book in a video everyone comments down below going oh my god read middlesex it's so good and i'm just so pleased that i have read it so thank you to everyone who said i should read it I'm really, really enjoying it.